Hey, my good friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today we're out here in the windy, hot desert test driving a vehicle that I've been very much looking forward to getting, and that is the all new 2020 Jeep Gladiator Wrangler pickup. Yeah, it's something I've been, I've been quite honestly looking forward to. So I'll just put that out there right away. So I'm gonna show it to you inside and out. We're gonna take it for a drive and I'm gonna tell you what I really think. Okay, my friends, before we get out on the test drive, we're going to talk about what this is because there is a lot more to talk about here than meets the eye. What they've done is they've actually taken the Wrangler JL and they've lengthened it 31 inches, wheelbase 19 inches longer. And it actually has a unique frame underneath. It's not just a lengthened JL frame. They've redesigned it so that it's stronger and it has a lot of ability to resist the twist. Rear suspension's unique. You've got forged arms, top and bottom, so that this thing has a tow capacity of up to 7,650 pounds and a payload capacity of up to 1,600 pounds. This thing is actually a very capable pickup truck in the midsize segment, one of the top numbers that you're going to see in those capacities but they've actually created a worthwhile truck here. The first thing you're going to notice is my cab. We have actually the very same door cut you're going to find on the Wrangler Unlimited. They've just created a square cab out here and they've done it gracefully, I think. I like what they've done there, sort of having that retro look a little bit. This is a Sport S, which is one step up from the base grade. Optioned on this one is the three-piece hardtop, black, of course. And so that's why we sort of have that plain Jane look going on here, black fenders. I just love it when they give me a base or mid-grade vehicle as opposed to the fully loaded expensive one because here I get a vehicle that really is representative of what most people are gonna buy. And I've looked on the website, searched inventory, at least here in Phoenix, and this is mostly what the dealers have mid $40,000 range. This one as tested prices out at just under $46,000. It looks kind of plain, but it's got a lot of little options in there. And we'll get to that here in a moment when we talk about some of the interior, but it's got all the classic hallmarks. Being this trim grade, I've got halogen headlights, halogen driving lights, not the full LED treatment. These wheels, 17 inch alloys with a nice Bridgestone Dueler AT off-road tire. Now it's not the full-blown tire you're going to get on the Rubicon, but it's a pretty good tire. I found it to be uh, pretty grippy and pretty capable out here in the wild as well as out on the pavement. And we'll get to that here in a moment. At the back, we've got a five-foot box. A five-foot box. That's the only size you're going to find on this. I have a spray-on bed liner, which is optioned here, as well as the cleat and utility system, which gives me not only the cleats and the LED lighting, but an inverter with an AC outlet in the back. That's a really nice touch. I like the look at the back of this thing. It's very retro Jeep lettering across the tailgate, and those taillights sort of pop out like that. And I think they've done a nice job of integrating the pickup truck look into the Wrangler. And I think that they've sort of put a lot of nice touches in here that really keep the Jeep DNA in the styling. The interior of the Gladiator is 100% identical to that of the Wrangler, except for the back seat, which we'll get to in a minute. And being that I'm in a sport, we have a pretty basic level interior. I've got cloth seats that are manually adjustable. This does have a package which gives me a leather steering wheel and it gives me heated seats, a heated steering wheel, it's the cold weather package. And there is an upgrade here with the audio system to the seven inch Uconnect display audio system. But there are a number of upgrades above this when it comes to the audio. So it's a pretty plain Jane interior and I absolutely love it. It's very utilitarian, it's very camping gear, it's very high quality and very well laid out in fact. It just won Ward's 10 Best Interiors, in fact. And when you look around, you can see why. The quality, the switch gear, very good. The best I've seen in a Jeep. The window switches down here on the center console, on the center stack. And there are plenty of ports for connecting your media. You've got two different types of USB ports. You've got an auxiliary port. You have a 12 volt port here. But as I sit here, a very upright seating position, as you've come to expect in a Jeep Wrangler, very upright windshield. Visibility is very good in my opinion. Uh, I used to drive a Hummer H2 at one point in my life and this is very much on par with that. And you can see the hood, which is good. You can see the outward boundaries of this vehicle if you're off-roading, with the exception of those fenders and the wheels sticking out. But you have a good sense of 
where the edges of your vehicle are and that is great. The instrument cluster in front of me is classic Jeep, two dials, there's a center screen that gives you a lot of information and you can customize what's on there. There is an upgraded cluster above this on the higher trim grades, a full digital instrument cluster, but I like this, it's still quite good. The steering wheel's got a nice quality feel, there's plenty of switch gear on it, both on the back of it and on the front. These seats are very comfortable cloth seats which actually I prefer over leather in many vehicles they are manually adjustable but once you get them where you want them they're they're pretty comfortable I think very supportive pretty good pretty good side bolstering going on a lot of storage down in this lower bin when it comes to the door storage not quite as much you've got nets down there the glove box not that big this isn't really a vehicle that I would say is big on storage in fact there's a slot for your phone right here as well as that other one, but neither one of those are very convenient, I don't think. I like having a place where I can just lay it. That's really the only complaint I have about the interior here. Optioned on this is the hard top, soft top is standard. Optioned further than that are headliner panels for this hard top, which is like 550 bucks. Pretty spendy for a couple little cheap inserts, but it does help with the noise in here as well as the insulation. Also notable here is that the integrated roll bar is actually very well masked. You don't actually see any of the steel. And it's not a tubular steel roll bar like in Jeep's past. This is actually sort of a stamped steel tube roll bar. And it's thus covered with a lot of plastic bezels so that it's not only safer if you were to get into a heavy duty accident and bump into it, but it's actually a little bit more appealing from the visual standpoint when this top is off and you can actually see it you can see that it's actually quite a formed piece of metal, not just bent tube steel. Rear seat passengers are going to find plenty of space back here. These seats are set for my height about 5'8 to 5'9, depending on what I'm wearing as far as boots or shoes. And so in that way, you can see I've got plenty of space back here. There's actually an indentation here on the seat, which gives me a little bit more space. But if you had someone up front that was 6'6'2", six, six, that would be a little tighter back here, I think. Now, the seating position, I do feel like the seat's a little bit on the low side, not unlike the regular Wrangler, but there are a couple of differences back here, and that is the way the seat folds. These seat cushions fold upward in a 60-40 split. Under the seat in this particular vehicle, because I've got a package, has locking storage. And what's really cool about that is not only does that locking storage open in a 60-40 split, but if you look closely, you can pull all of those partitions out there. And I haven't tried this, but I believe you can probably lay a rifle in there, and if you can't, it is lockable and thus would be, I think, uh, a good place to store firearms. This seat also folds down and that gives you a nice platform if you're putting boxes and gear in here. The other thing I want to point out is, is we do have vents and we have big cup holders. There's a lot of amenities back here which are above and beyond even what some of the competitors standard midsize trucks offer such as the Ranger I just had last week does not have vents back here. Also, this is normally where I talk about a spare tire in most SUVs. Spare tire is actually mounted under the bed of this truck. It's actually a full-size spare tire. Expected, I think, in this particular place. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with this interior. Even though it's not the most visually exciting place, it's very utilitarian, it's down to business, and it's made of rugged materials. This seat cloth, the plastics on the dash, a lot of rubberized materials, and the switch gear is a very high quality. Those are the things that really get my attention. I like the fact that it's just it's just designed for living. It's not designed to sort of entertain you with a lot of crap. It's just designed to uh, be practical and to be easily clean because when you pull the doors and the roof off and you go out really playing hard with this thing, uh, you're gonna wanna hose it out. Okay, my friends, let's see how this thing drives. First thing we gotta talk about is the fact that we are out here in the Arizona desert where it's very hot. Air conditioner has been on, it's on right now, so that always does affect performance. And some of you have wondered where I'm actually filming. I've seen the comments. We're actually in a place called Queen Valley here out in the desert east of Phoenix. Hardly nobody out here. It'd be a great place to film a uh, horror movie because nobody's going to get in your way. It's kind of creepy like that, but it is very beautiful scenery and there's no traffic in my way out here to do my own filming. So that said, let's talk about this thing. Powertrain, 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. This is an engine you're going to find in almost any vehicle that Jeep, Ram, or Dodge builds that has rear wheel drive. Very popular engine. It's been around for a while. Here, 285 horsepower, cattle guard, 260 pound feet of torque. And in this particular vehicle, I've got the eight speed automatic transmission. So, my question always is how does it go? 
Okay, come to a complete stop. And the auto start system just shut the motor off, so we'll see how good it engages. Nice sound. And 60. Not bad, really, considering how much this thing weighs. And 80. <laughs> Slow down. Woo. All right, so as far as how it compares to other mid-sized trucks, it's really sort of in the magic mid-zone there. It's a little more than Toyota, a little less than General Motors. And next year, you'll be able to get the V6 diesel in this, which would be my personal choice. But that said, this still does get pretty good gas mileage. It's rated at 17 city, 22 highway, with a combined average of 19. That's what the EPA says. I've actually gotten 20 mpg this week, as measured, uh, mostly city driving with the air conditioner on. Now, that's I think that's pretty remarkable given the size of this thing because uh, I've got a 2005 Volkswagen Beetle that gets 21 in the city with the air conditioner on, and it's a little car. This is a big thing that's getting close to that. Handling is the other big conversation we have to have in a Jeep. Now, last generation Wrangler, the JK, Actually, it was one of the best handling Jeeps there was, especially in the longer wheelbase version because you had less of that forward-aft rocking motion. And here in the Gladiator with even more wheelbase, this is probably the most stable Wrangler I've ever driven. I will point out, though, this does have that sort of lumbering, rocking, sort of marshmallowy charm that is a Wrangler and what's funny about that is is this very softly sprung sort of floating sensation you get in a Wrangler if this were in any other vehicle I'd be bitching about it I'll be honest I'd be going this thing handles like crap but in a Wrangler for some reason it's part of its charm you know the reality is is that is a component of the fact that this is really tuned to be an off-road vehicle therefore this is a tuning that is really geared toward that but we're not there yet here we're on the pavement we're at speed it's a pretty quiet ride a little bit of wind noise but that's because of all the seams in this hard top thrown into a corner Woo! <laughs> quite a bit of body roll but that is to be expected we're in a jeep that body rolls there because there needs to be a lot of suspension articulation when this thing's off-road and uh, roll stiffness tends to be an enemy to that so tuning for off-road but outside of that it's still predictable plenty of grip with these tires and it's a very comfortable riding vehicle out here and in town and another thing that's very important to me in this vehicle because I live in the city frankly I don't actually live out here speed humps those those damn speed bumps they put on city streets this thing sails right over the top of them like they're not even there now this is where I really wanted to drive this truck for the longest time because, I'll be honest with you folks, I've been thinking about buying one. And this is important to me right here, the Desert Washboard Road. This separates the men from the boys. This is what tells me if this vehicle's a POS or not. And so this washboard road with its sort of ribbed surface, ribbed for its pleasure, this surface can really take even the best of the vehicles out there and make it feel like it's just absolute trash. It can vibrate the structure, vibrate the suspension. I can get rattling in the suspension and the steering, and I'm not getting any of that here. And I didn't expect it, if I'm honest. Uh, this is the Jeep, right? It's supposed to be the best of the best when it comes to off-road and how well it handles these things. And uh, it's everything I expected more. It's got a very nice, compliant, solid, composed ride out here. What might have been a shortcoming on the pavement with this compliant ride is perfect in this arena. That's This is what it's for. And so this surface is really just child's play. This is, this is nothing. It really just is nothing for this. It's almost not even worth mentioning. This vehicle just rides along very comfortably. And with this longer wheelbase, um, I'm not getting a lot of pitch and yaw going around corners on the gravel. It's just got, it's just got a nice, predictable demeanor. Go around a corner a little bit quicker here. Ooh, yeah. No, tail doesn't kick out that easily. And even if it started to, the stability control would be right in there, putting a stop to that. But what I really want to find out is how this drives on a little bit tighter of a trail. This is just a nice place to see you know, how maneuverable a vehicle is because it's a little tighter and a little bumpier than the washboard road. 
And what I'm already finding out is, is this is a Jeep, man. You've got these solid axles and you've got the suspension tuning that this thing just kind of rocks and rolls out here, but in a comfortable way. I absolutely love it. I love it. And because this thing is tuned the way it is as compliant, I can just roll along out here without really even a care. It's not beating me to death. It's very comfortable. And like the Ford Ranger I tested out here last week, I, I don't have to really go too slow. I can just uh, not worry too much about these bumps that tend to be a pretty big problem with full-size trucks as an example. Uh, this is just a great vehicle to push along out here on a trail. Woo. It just doesn't beat you to death at all. It's just, uh, it's just a hoot. I love it. I'm smitten. Can you tell? I wasn't going to be disappointed. I don't care. <laughs> what can I say, folks? I'm in love with this thing, and I'm just so going to buy myself one. Yeah. Uh, so, wrapping it up for the Jeep Wrangler. I like it. Can you tell? Uh, you've pretty much got a very biased, un balanced review of this vehicle gushing all right there's no objectivity here i love this thing i think it's the greatest thing jeeps ever made but seriously i have three key takeaways here and they're probably not going to surprise you the first one is home run this is a home run the jl wrangler was a home run best wrangler ever they've taken it they've made it the best pickup truck in class in my opinion in terms of capability towing payload off-road capability and gravitas i mean look at this thing this is not going to blend in in the parking lot i have gotten nothing but uh eyes popping out of their head and what the hell is that all week with this vehicle um and it's something that honestly i've been looking forward to and i've said that because i love wranglers and i've loved the pickup truck version of this since they saw the aev conversion several years ago at a trade show and i just thought jeep makes jeep needs to make that and they did and here it is now i can buy one uh, second key takeaway is if you're going to buy one, you're going to pay for the damn thing, okay? This is $45,000 and some change as tested, and this really represents what you're going to find at dealership lots for the most part. If you search inventory in your area, you're going to find that most of what's on the lot is this. This trim grade, sort of this collection of options, right around forty-five dollars to $50,000, even though it does start at thirty-three. dollars uh, what they're building is this, and this is what they're pushing out there in large numbers. If you want a Rubicon, if you want a base model, good luck finding it. Whatever the case is, when you do find one you like, you're going to pay for it because they're not going to be discounting these things anytime soon, folks. This is the hottest freaking thing on the Jeep lot. And if you walk on there with a paycheck uh, that you're ready to cash or a checkbook you're ready to write, or if you've got credit ready to use, they are going to sign you up for the full amount. That's just how it's going to go. And they might even want more. So uh, just be prepared for that. If you're one of these people, I never pay over MSRP. Well, then you're going to wait a while. Uh, or you're going to have to, you know, have sex with somebody at the dealership high up the chain uh, to get a few bucks off. I mean, let's just be honest. Now, third key takeaway is I'm going to be one of those people. Uh, this is on the iBuy list. I love this thing without question. I don't care if it's a Jeep and they're not necessarily reliable. I, there's no objectivity here. I love this thing. I don't care if it breaks all the time. Now, that's just anecdotal. It may not at all. Uh, but the reality is, is this is a vehicle that it presses all my fun buttons and I just love everything about it. I want it. So it's on my iBuy it list. I'd recommend you buy it. I will buy it myself. I'll probably wait till next year when the diesel is available and uh, maybe when some of the hype has sort of died down a little bit and I have a chance of getting the thing at less than MSRP, that will be my goal. But uh, I fully expect that the diesel will be only in the top trim grade or two. That's typically how they do that to bury the cost of it. And it'll probably be a lot more money than 45 grand, but I'll have to figure it out. <laughs> you know, it's just how it goes. I just think that uh, Jeep has got a tiger by the tail here. And if you want to catch it, just be prepared to feed it and to pay for it. At least it gets good gas mileage. So if you like the video you just saw, click right there, see my latest one. If you really liked it, click down there and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Either way, stay tuned.